I talked about DeSantis. I talked about Trump. I talked about Biden. We've, we've got to get to one other candidate for president who has just announced his run. He's not getting nearly enough coverage, even though the announcement came yesterday. Classic lamestream media doesn't want to cover the real candidates. That person, of course, would be Joe Exotic. Yes, the Tiger King, who is currently in prison for uh, hiring a hitman to kill his nemesis, Carol Baskin. Joe Exotic has declared that he is running as a Republican for president. In his announcement, he said, put aside that I am gay, that I am in prison for now, that I used drugs in the past, that I had more than one boyfriend at once, and that Carol hates my guts. This all has not a thing to do with me being able to be your voice. The best thing you have going for supporting me is that I am used to fighting my whole life just to get by. I am broke. They have taken everything I ever worked for away. And it's time we take this country back. Now, Joe has a couple of points. Elsewhere in his announcement, he said, I'm just in prison because of the corruption of the Justice Department. And I don't think that's true. I think he's in prison because he hired a hitman to kill a lady. Uh, But his point is the Justice Department is corrupt. Even had uh, Whitaker, the the former acting uh, attorney general, who said that there is a two-tiered system of justice in the United States. Uh, We know that the Justice Department goes hard after pro-life grannies and goes hard after horn-hatted people being given a private tour by police around the Capitol on January 6th taking selfies, but they allow BLM off the hook. We, We know that that's true. We know that people can change. America is the place of uh, second chances. And we know that candidates who have nothing to lose are sometimes the very best candidates. This is one of the arguments for Trump, actually, is they've thrown everything at him. They've, they've taken away everything of his that they can, short of throwing him in prison. And so he's not, he's not really beholden to anybody. That's true. Uh, that said, uh, it would appear that Joe Exotic is basically unrepentant. Uh, I, I'm not sure that he's really reformed any of his ways at all. And so I will not, I will, I don't, I don't want to endorse in the primaries, but I don't think that I will be supporting Joe Exotic for his run, though he can run and presidential candidates have run before from prison. Eugene Debs, famously a socialist, ran from prison and he got something like 8% of the vote. So don't, if you're in it, you can win it. Don't write any candidate out, including Joe Exotic. The country at the moment is in pretty clear decline on pretty much every front. This would explain why the country is turning inward on the foreign policy front. Why at least the opposition in this country, which is the conservatives, why why we're turning inward. And it's not just the isolationist fringe of the right wing. It's even one of the leading Republican presidential candidates for 2024. That would be Ron DeSantis, who has turned his vision inward when it comes to the war in Ukraine. Uh, He just told Tucker Carlson, quote, while the U.S. has many vital national interests, becoming further entangled in a territorial dispute between Ukraine and Russia is not one of them. So the squishes and the libs and the neocons and the whatever term you want to use for the more centrist, liberal establishment wing of the party, they are furious at Ron DeSantis for saying, you know, I don't think we need to write a blank check to Ukraine. And some of the more conservative, MAGA, right-wing people in the Republican Party, they don't believe him because not that long ago, Ron DeSantis was advocating for more intervention in Ukraine. You're better off dealing with Putin by being strong. I mean, we've tried to deal with some of this in the Congress a couple years ago. We authorized lethal aid for Ukraine so that they could resist some of the Russian incursion. Uh, The Obama administration fought us on that. Uh, But I think that's the type of thing when when Putin sees he can gain an inch, he's apt apt to take a mile. And basically, if America's not gonna give him any pushback, I think he's gonna continue to try to expand Russian influence. Okay, so from the pro-Trump camp, this is one of the clips that says, that, that they insist proves that DeSantis isn't for real, he's blowing in the wind, and we can't really trust him to execute the America First agenda. But, but this is complicated by the fact that President Trump previously had also argued for greater involvement in Ukraine. Remember that with Ukraine, 
I sent the javelins that you see are so effective against the tanks. Biden didn't. And in fact, he ended our last order. Probably it'll get there because everyone realized it was the right thing to do. And Obama, remember Obama, Biden, they sent blankets. I sent javelins and they sent, well, you know what the javelins are, the anti-tank weapons. They knocked the hell out of those tanks. And Ukraine wouldn't be having a chance without them. That was all sent by me, all of it. We sent other military equipment too. We didn't send our soldiers, but we sent them a lot of equipment. Okay, and he makes a distinction there. He says, we're not sending soldiers, but we sent him a lot of equipment. We've, we've been funding the Ukraine war effort. So what does this mean? It means that Trump and DeSantis are running in the same lane. And they've both taken all sorts of contradictory positions over the years. Now, President Trump is very anti-free trade. He's very pro-tariff. There were op-ed, there, there was one op-ed in particular that I'm thinking of that was published in his name when he was considering running for president first time. And it was a very pro-free trade, pro-globalization sort of op-ed. Obviously, he became much more protectionist and, and now advocates for a, a type of mercantilism. There are also videos of, of Ron DeSantis saying, I'm very pro-free trade. He took votes that were pro-free trade. Now it would, it would appear he's making a little turn. So what does this mean? It means that both these guys are running in the same lane. They're, for the rest of the campaign, they will both be trying to run in the same lane. Trump is going to say, I'm Trump. I'm one of a kind. I'm an American original. I'm the guy who changed the Republican Party. I've done it before. I'll do it again. Ron DeSantis is going to say, President Trump had his time. He didn't win re-election. He's undisciplined. And so I'm Trump without the baggage, but I'm, I'm going to be a type of Trump. I'm just going to be the, the new and improved version of Trump. They're both running in the same lane. So the question for primary voters, I don't think is going to be parsing different issues. I doubt that there's going to be much daylight at all on any of these issues. I suspect the question is going to come down to, who do you trust more to do it? So right now, Ron DeSantis, after some bad news in recent weeks in the polls with President Trump taking his lead back, DeSantis not really growing in the polls. According to a CNN SSRS poll, DeSantis is now at top of the uh, Republican primary field, 39% to Trump's 37%. So essentially tied. Haley's at seven, Pence is at six, Tim Scott's at two, Sununu's at two. Yunkin is even in the poll. He's at 1%. Uh, so it remains anybody's race. The national polls don't really matter when it comes to presidential primaries because the primaries happen state by state. So what matters is who's leading in Iowa, who's leading in New Hampshire, who's leading in South Carolina, who's leading in Florida. Because as momentum builds, that's how you're going to see the, the, the real hierarchy of candidates begin to shape up. It won't happen for a while, but According to another poll, more than one third of Biden voters do not want him to run again. And so you can expect more Republican candidates and all sorts of different lanes. You're going to have the centrist lane. You're going to have the neocon lane. You're going to have the libertarian lane. And you're going to have the Trump lane. And right now you got two candidates running in that lane. The rest of the show continues now. You do not want to miss it. Uh, you can become a member right now at dailywire.com using promo code Knowles at checkout. You will get two months free on all annual plans. Mr. Davies has lots of secret special fun things planned for the creme de la creme inner circle of the members block. We'll see you over there. 